Huh, wow, I look hot today. Hello and welcome to another video. Um, if I see devices that connect to my phone and they promise the world, I am dubious, to say the least. Yet, here we are. This is a infrared camera that attaches to my phone sent to me by Top Don. Um, now, I don't have, well, initially I didn't have very high expectations, but this cost $350 Australian. So it can't just be something from the $2 shop, right? So it's got to be something to it. So I thought, okay, we'll try it out. I have some, I have a few use cases that I actually need an infrared camera for. I can think of three right now, but we'll get to those in a bit later when we test it out. So um, yeah, first of all, let's have a look at it and uh, talk a bit about the specs because it's kind of interesting, actually, the more I look at it. So this is the TC001 infrared camera from Topdon. And yes, I had never heard of Topdon before, but that doesn't mean anything really. Um, so here's the box. And well, I'll just oh, nice little case here. Okay, so it comes in a little carry case, which I had seen online, which is kind of nice because I like protecting my equipment, especially if I use it uh, regularly. And there's a manual in here as well. We might need that later. Who knows? But let's have a look at this. We'll just open it up, and there's not much to it. There's just the uh, cable here, extension cable. There's a bit of a uh, a little cloth we can wipe it clean, and of course there is the TC001 itself. So it looks like that. Um, just a little itty bit, it doesn't weigh anything, 30 grams. Has a USB-C attachment on the on the end there. Um, and it just, just hooks into your phone, like so, like that. Actually it hooks in the other way, I think. Anyway, depending on which side you want. Um, so the specs, and I'm gonna use my notes here. This has a 256 by 192 pixel resolution which doesn't sound like a lot, but apparently in the infrared world, that is quite decent. So I'll take that, all right. It can measure from minus 20 to 550 degrees Celsius. Um, and if you are using Fahrenheit, that will be a different number. Uh, it's compatible with Android. Uh, so I have my Pixel 7 Pro here, and it is compatible with Windows as well, but not iOS. And whether that's due to USB-C, which is now changed, or limitations of the OS, I don't know, but it's not available for iOS. Um, it can't detect heat through, um, let's see here, underwater through glass or a wall. This is just straight on, but we'll get to that when we test it out as well. So yeah, little itty bitty things. Um, oh yeah, the, um, the infrared range that it, that it uh, gets is eight to 14 micrometer which apparently is the standard infrared range for temperature. So, you yeah, know, let me know in the comments if you think that is uh, not correct, or if you have comments on that. Um, yeah, so if you like me testing out things like this, which are a bit, bit off the channel's normal topics of home automation and networking, but yet not, let's, we'll get to that, consider subscribing to the, to the channel as well. So um, let's try and plug it in. Um, there's an app that goes with it into the phone and we'll test it out and see how it works. All right, so let's try and uh, hook it up and see how it actually works. So I have got the Topdon app running on my phone, as you'll see there. Um, so I'm just gonna try and plug it in and see what happens. Haven't actually done this before. So I'm gonna point it towards you on the bottom of the phone here, like this. Oh, my case is too big. Let's plug it in, bottom first here, like that. Like so. Boop. All right, allow TCO to access USB camera. Always open. Oh, so you can just open the app. That's probably a good idea. Yep. Okay. Oh, clear default in system apps download. Okay. Yep. Um, allow, yeah, just allow to watch all photos and videos. I'm not sure what that does. So <laughs> if you have concerns about that, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna click allow all. So now, it's, it's, it's plugged in. <clears throat> I'm gonna try and click on thermal imaging, the first button here, and see what happens. All right, 
Look at that. So there's the camera. And you can see it even comes up with um, temperatures on there. So you can see that's in the middle there, 15.7. You can see the top and bottom, top and bottom, min and max temperature as well. So on the left there is 13 and at the window is 18. So what if I move it over here slightly? Oh, so the light's a little bit warmer. The LEDs that I don't get too, too warm, so 20. But it's, it's pretty good. It's a little bit jerky, but it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's real time, I'd say. All right. So before we get to all the buttons on the bottom, let's just try. So one of the things I wanted to do is I actually want to use it for something like networking equipment and see if it gets too hot, right? So that's one usage scenario. So let's see if we can do that. So up here, I'm going to open this, I think. You can see it's a lot warmer in there. Up the top there, what have we got? 39 degrees, 38, 38.5. So up here is the warmest by far. And then at the bottom here, there's, there's nothing running there. So the camera is obviously at the bottom, so we gotta move it up a bit higher. There we go. So that's 30 degrees or so, 40 degrees. So that works pretty well. All right, let's see what we have of uh, the features at the bottom here. So we can take a photo, that's the first button here. We can just take a photo of what we have and that I assume comes up with all the temperatures on us. So if I take a photo, let's do, let's take a photo up here of this, like so. I'm gonna take a photo there. All right, let's see if I can see the photo. Yeah, so it comes up with all of the uh, measurements on there as you'd expect. So that's pretty good, so you can take a photo of it. Obviously, we can also do a video, <clears throat> which is that one there. So if you have a, you know, a longer area or whatever you want to see, you can, you can take a video the same way. So the next button along is, oh, so these are the target areas. So for example, I can, uh, I can draw a dot and I can say, I want to know exactly what that temperature is. And then it just has a dot there um, forever. And um, how do I clear the dot? Oh, delete, there we go. I can do a line. So I go across here and it'll tell me on that line what is min and max temperature, right? And then you can do the same with a plane, so that's more of like a square. So within that square, what is the min and max temperature? So that's pretty handy, that's pretty handy. Oh, just on the full image, right? You can do a, a full image here, I'm assuming. I want to delete, full image, like that. So then we have the next one, which is I don't know, that is thermal imaging. Yeah, I realize that. Dual light, what does that do? <clears throat> Drag image. What do we do? Pinch to zoom. Okay. All oh, right, so that, that shows me the, the camera of the phone overlaid on top of the thermal image. Okay, so we can see what we're actually taking a photo of. So let's say like here we took a photo of that. Um, or can I, can I take a photo? Yeah, so if I go to the camera, I can then take a photo of that as well. Whoops. Uh, we want to take a photo. Nice. And that way you get the uh, actual image overlaid on top of the thermal image. All right, that could be useful. I can see that. Um, and then we have transparency. I'm assuming that's the same. Oh, how transparent do you want that overlaid image? All right, fair enough. Yep. And dual light. Oh, that just turns it off. Yeah, I got it, thank you. <clears throat> yeah, right, turns it on and off. Nice, okay, and then there's some levels here. Now these colors apparently don't actually, it's just whatever you prefer. So if I change the colors here, that's just because I might find that easy to see um, than, than the others default. So it's just whatever you think is good. Whoa, that's pretty psychedelic. <laughs> um, you can choose other colors there if you want. I kind of like the defaults, they're right. And then we have some settings pseudo color bar contrast we can set up the contrast or lower it okay details what does that do oh yeah that goes, does become a bit more detailed if you got it up okay so you get a few it probably takes a bit more processing power contrast oh yeah yeah very contrasty you leave it somewhere in the middle and an alarm Oh, high and low temperature alarm. Oh, so if you know, say you had something that cannot be higher than 50 degrees, you can set an alarm at 50, you can scan, and if there's something that's warmer than 50, it'll sound the alarm. That's kind of neat, that's useful. All right, we can get put in markers and outlines and ringtones. 
ring ring ringtones? No, I don't want it to use. Is that the sound of the alarm? Maybe? Probably is. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> and then the last icon is the uh, temperature range, I guess. Automatic recognition, or you can set it to a normal temperature range, minus 20 to 150, or the high temperature range, 150 to 550. So depending on the environment that you're working in. Um, I would just put it on automatic, I think. I don't know. I guess that's up to you, what you prefer. All right, but this is really good. Like this is, it's very um, accurate, I'd say. Now, so you might be wondering, why do I have this if it has nothing to do with home, home automation or networking equipment? Well, it does have something to do with the networking equipment because I've had some of the switches have run really, really hot. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes I'm not sure that the temperature that I get from like CPU temperature is actually representing of how hot it is in the cupboard. And in fact, uh, in my server cupboard, I've installed a fan at the top that turns on when it gets to a certain temperature. So for things like that, identifying what is hot with networking equipment, it, this is gonna be really, really useful. But there's a couple of other uh, examples as well, which I'll get to now. A car. Yeah, um, we do a lot of cars on the farm and it can be really handy knowing where the heaty bits are, like brakes and stuff, and if it's overheating. So let's just have a look at the car. So there's Chris, hello. Um, <laughs> so if I turn around here and we go over the car, you can see where the warm bits are, where the heat's actually coming out. It's right around here, right around there. You can see it's 45, 41, 45. The car's just been running, by the way. So it's not the normal temperature. Um, the same way I go over here and I look at inside. So outside here, you can see, oh, that's me, hello. It's like 16 degrees in the metal. As soon as I move it inside the car, you can see it gets much warmer around the heating vents, etc. Um, so it's working, it's super accurate. Again, it goes all in real time. So let's see brakes as well. There might be, let's have a look. Yeah, you can see the brakes just light up instantly. So how warm are they? Oh, yeah, 47, 43, 50. They're probably about 50, 58, yeah. Some very hot bits in there, 58 degrees. So yeah. You can use it for cars as well, which is really handy. Um, okay, other example coming up now. All right, so now we are in my kitchen. Uh, you might have seen this before because I installed the Udify 6 Enterprise just above me here. Um, but the reason I'm here is that this is the non-renovated part of our house. We haven't got to this bit yet. So it's full of gaps, I think. So I'm gonna use the thermal camera, the TC001, to figure out where the gaps are and where the air is actually going out. I have a fair idea though. So I can use the, again, the app. And if I just sort of measure it here, you know, in general, in front of me, see there's the camera, I was, you know, 22, 23 degrees. It's warm in here because we've got the fire on. See the fire's over there. <laughs> you can see that it says 209 degrees. Yeah, it is. It's really, really humming. So it should be warm in here yet it's only 23 degrees. So let's have a look around the gaps here. Uh, for example, here you can see the door, 21 degrees, but if I go down to where near where the lock is, well suddenly it's 17 and a half there. So obviously air is coming in or out that way, it's getting cold there, right? Um, and again, if I go just you know, next to it, it's 21, 22, so obviously the, the warm air is going out that way. Um, and above me are these really old crusty lights, lights that aren't very good. So you can see here, if I point it at that, you can see they're warmer because all the hot air is going up that way. It's going into the ceiling space. So you can actually use this as well to figure out where you need to insulate, where you need to stop uh, gaps in walls, windows, ceilings, wherever, and save money. Yeah, save on energy. So. That's my other option that I'm gonna use. So I have three options, networking, uh, cars, and figure out where all my heat is going. All right. All right, so that was two more ways you could use it. There's also, you can use it, for example, in agriculture to see if, you know, 
crops are warm enough or there's cold enough or uh, if the right temperature in your greenhouse, whatever it is. Um, yeah, there's a ton of different applications for these thermal, uh, thermal cameras. So oh, I'm pretty happy so far with this one. Let's just go through the rest of the app. Uh, so we have temperature monitoring. So let's see what that is. Uh, so we can monitor in real time, generate image. Okay, what does that do? Okay, do that. Generate an image there. Select monitoring type. Uh, 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 plane, okay. Uh, select an area to monitor. Uh, that monitor, that area, yes. Start recording. Ah, so we can get some data over it and we can get some, some trends and some graphs on it. All right, so I guess you wouldn't hold it in your hand. <laughs> you would probably mount it somewhere, right? Again, you can use this with Windows as well and a USB, so you could make it stationary for sure. Um, but you can see if I move down to here, the graphs are gonna go way down in real time. Then off again, woo! Right, so that's, we'll stop that. So we can do monitoring, okay? There's the history, and then we have real time as well, if you want. Ah, so here it's on real time is when you record it. And then we have the gallery, which is just the images I've taken. Look at that, beautiful. Um, and then the personal information. Uh, I could make an account with Top Don, as always, they want to make an account. Temperature correction, all right, so you can say what the ambient temperature is because that will have an effect. In here it is 16.4, so I could put that at, and then that will adjust for that, right? Distance to spot, 0.25, so again, the further you are away from things, the less it'll work, or the less accurate it'll be, right? Um, yeah, right. Emissit emissivity table of common materials. Yeah, right. These are all things I don't understand and I don't know what I mean. <laughs> but they're in here. Um, all right, temperature units. We have Celsius, because why wouldn't you have Celsius and no one else uses, uses anything else? Feedback, image calibration, version, etc., etc., etc. just in the settings here. Um, so, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, $349 seems like a lot, but it is really snappy. It is really accurate, very easy to use. Um, so, you know, I don't know. Let me know in the comments what you think. Is this something you could use? Um, would you like to see more of these kind of things on the channel? Because I like these gadgets. I like gadgets of all sorts, but at least these that are sort of adjacent or on the periphery of the networking and home automation that I do a lot of, I find those really, really interesting. So if you do too, Consider subscribing in the, uh, to the channel down below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.